Hello, brothers and sisters of Christ. This week I thought we'd do a couple of videos on questions and answers. Uh, give some brothers some, a chance to get caught up on the past study that we did since it was almost two hours. But the question and answer for this video is going to be someone hit me up with one question and we're going to go through that question and answer that question but they followed it up with a question that is how is my side supposed to be pleased with that? Okay. So I really wanted to focus on that statement. I want brethren to make comments. I believe this brother made a comment, was asking questions in sincerity, and he acted in sincerity, responded in sincerity. But I wanted to share this with you. Okay. Here was the question. If you want to turn to Galatians chapter 1, verse 8, to get ready. Galatians chapter 1, verse 8. If you draw angels with wings which I believe and show how it is a false belief. They believe angels have wings, and I show it's a false belief. Here, how is my side, how is my side supposed to be happy with that? Your statement was not correct. That was the response I got. Now, brothers and sisters Christ, remember what the Bible says, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. I could go hard, I could be a jerk, and I have been a jerk in the past. I'm talking about when I was newly saved and some of my responses. Uh, we don't need to be jerks. Just wanted to throw this out there. Okay, they're asking a question, then answer in sincerity, remember? And meekness, instructing those that, uh, and, that oppose themselves. And we're supposed to preach to the truth in sincerity and truth. We're supposed to preach the Word of God in sincerity and truth. Okay, with sincerity. Okay. Here's the answer. Chapter and verse where angels in the Bible have wings. Every time they show up in the Bible, they are mistaken for men. Judges 13, we won't be going there, but Judges 13 is a good example of this. Now, remember, we're going to go through and I'm going to show some information again on angels. Why angels don't have wings. Why I make that statement. And then we're going to find out, we're going to, God's going to show us something very important with this response. Why hypocrisy, why toting both sides of the line is wrong. Okay, but the big question that we're going to be answering is, how is my side supposed to be pleased with that? Galatians chapter 1 verse 8 we read, that though we or an angel from heaven, we're talking about angels here, so I thought this would be a good verse, preach any other gospel unto you that than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so I say now again, if any man preach, if any man, first he says, do we preach, or an angel from heaven, though we, or an angel from heaven, then number nine says, if any man. Why, why do I think that? Because angels are men, they look like men. If any man preach, when, the, when an, an angel, if in the time of Jacob's trouble, there's going to be angels that leave their first estate and come down. A third of the angels are going to come down, I believe, uh, Jacob's ladder, going to come down and follow Satan, because Satan gets kicked out of heaven. And they're going to follow Satan down here, and there's going to be angels down here that look like men, and they're going to be preaching false gospels. Okay. Also, this is a good verse to show that there's a different dispensation, because there is an angel in heaven that is of God that comes and preaches a different gospel in the time of Jacob's trouble. So this statement is for today, from the death of Jesus Christ, burial and resurrection, to the catching away of the body of Christ, the day of Christ, that blessed hope. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which have than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Notice this is said twice. I always point out stuff when it's said twice, three times, four. When it's said twice or more, it's serious. It's important. It's all important. But God likes to say, because the Bible teaches that before one or two, before two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Two or three. It needs to be done two or three times. Okay? It's done twice here. Verse 10. For do I now, this is the main verse, for do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Now he's talking about people compromising the gospel to please men. But for instruction righteousness, we're going to go through some other verses, but compromising the word of God to please men. And we're going to see how dangerous it is. And this conversation that I had back and forth with the brother in Christ. Brother or sister, the name, I'm not going to give the name, but the name was, it, was, it wasn't actually a name of a person. It was almost like a, 
a nickname or something, a made-up name. Okay. So first, let's get into the first question. If you draw angels with wings, okay. Now, my answer was chapter and verse where angels in the Bible have wings. That's all you have to do, brothers, is Christ, chapter and verse. I do this with a lot of brethren out there, and professing brethren, and actual brethren, that this is our final authority. Show me where they have wings. There's times where I said it's not in there, and someone showed me it in there, and I just, I didn't see it. God used you to show me. And there's a lot of times where it's not in here at all. There's times I've said some things that aren't in here, that aren't in the scriptures. And brethren said, chapter and verse on that? And I'm like, eh, I got caught PWCing. I learned that somewhere. The Bible buildings, when I was a lot false convert, after I got saved, I learned it from other teachers that, you know, PWC, Polly want a cracker. They just say what someone else said and then pass it on. Pass. Someone said that angels have wings. Well, who said that? Someone says, you can stop all that in two seconds by going, well, let's find out what the Bible says. Yeah, yeah, you can have a good preacher that preaches truth, but when there's a contention, when there's a disagreement, this is the final authority. This is what we go to, brothers and Christ. And it seems like the brethren are forgetting this. I'm of this person. I'm of that person. Respecter of persons. I'm of Paul. I'm of Paulus. Okay, was Paul crucified for you? You know, were you baptized in Paul's name? You know, were you baptized in my name? Was I crucified? You're not supposed to be a, a follower of a person when it comes to respect or persons. This needs to be our final authority. Okay. So now, cherubim and seraphim have wings. You learn that in Exodus 25.20. You can turn to Exodus 25.20. And the cherubim shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and shall in their faces shall look one to another. Towards the mercy seat shall the face of the cherubim be. So you have here, cherubim have wings. I'll show you why this is important in a second. Uh, if you want to turn to Isaiah 6.2. Isaiah 6.2. Remember, you can always pause the video, turn there, make sure you have the Bible open, turn there. The reason I'm not turning left and right is to save time. These videos are getting long as it is, and even my short videos are getting long these days. I'm trying to seriously get into the scriptures and make you guys, brothers and sisters of Christ, realize that this is the final authority, not this. Isaiah 6, 2. Above it stood the seraphim. So did cherubim have wings? Seraphim. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. But you see, cherubim have wings, seraphim have wings. Now, a good study of cherubim was by a brother in Christ, 33rd book. I have it on my channel. I also reference where you can get it from the main channel, 33rd book. It's a great study on cherubim. He believes that seraphim and cherubim are the same thing, but they're called something different depending on what their job title is at that time. One minute they're doing this, one minute they're doing that, and that's why they're called to be. Now, you don't have to believe that. You can still believe cherubim and seraphim are two different you know, creatures created by God. All right? But he believes that they're the same. It's just one's a t God's taxi service. The other one's when they're just sitting there stationary, you know, standing there. They look like they have four wings when they're standing or flying. But when they're just standing there, they have a set of wings around the legs, a set of wings around here, and two wings out, stretched out. So they have six wings. It's a good study. But the point of this is cherub have angel with wings and seraphim have wings. And why is that important? Okay. It's important because Satan was a fallen cherub. You read that in Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14. Satan is a fallen cherub. Now, what does Satan like to do? He likes to pretend, he likes to mimic God. He likes to copy God because he wants to be God. He tries to copy Jesus Christ. What is Jesus Christ called in the Old Testament? The angel of the Lord. Jesus is the angel of the Lord. The body of God in the Old Testament is the angel of the Lord, and it looks just like a man. So can Satan counterfeit that? No. If he stands there, you're looking at something that has four to six wings, a cherub to seraphim. They've got four to six wings. How does he counterfeit that? He puts this false teaching out there that angels have wings. See, i got wings, so angels must have wings, because I'm an angel. And the Bible says that Satan transforms himself into an angel of light tries to look like a man that's intelligent, 
that's got all this wisdom. It's like, you know, but he's got wings. Well, yeah, but angels have wings. Angels have... No. Cherubim have wings. Seraphim have wings. Satan has wings. He's a fallen cherub. He's not an angel. But he likes to pretend to be. He likes to mimic God. He wants to be like God. He wants to be like the Most High. You read that, I think it's in Isaiah 14, you read, he wants to be like the Most High. 2 Corinthians 11, 13. 2 Corinthians 11, 13, we read, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed to an angel of light. Like I said, if you watch that study by 33rd book, a cherubim, one of the faces of the cherubim is, is a man. A fit cherub has four faces. Uh, see if I can remember. Eagle, ox, man. And I forgot the fourth one. Maybe it'll come to me. But it's got four faces. One of the faces is a man. Okay, so they can look like a man, they can look like an eagle, they can look like an ox. Um, and I just, I, for some reason, my brain's just frozen on the fourth one. So if you remember, Brother Says Christ, please put it in the comment section. Or I'll end up looking it up again later. But he transforms himself into an angel of light. Why? Because Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. Uh, hold your hand there, you don't have to go there, but I'm going there for just a second. Because I was talking to a brother in Christ about this. Let's see if I can turn with one hand and not lose my place. And I lost my place. Let's see if I can find my place again. Okay. Angel of light. Remember, Jesus is called the angel of the Lord. In John 1.1 1, 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, I'm the light of the world. What's going on here? Satan is counterfeiting Jesus Christ. And Jesus is called an angel of the Lord in the Old Testament. Okay? Angel of light. Now people say light here, it has to do with wisdom. More light, more light. I know some brethren do that. But when you're comparing Scripture with Scripture, and you look over here, this life was the light of men. There is wisdom behind, if you want real eternal life, you listen to God. And you do things God's way. You go through Jesus Christ. There's one meter between man and God, the man Christ Jesus. But I believe here, the angel of life, light here, is Satan posing as Jesus Christ, offering people eternal life. He's the man that's offering people eternal life. But all he's really given them is eternal damnation when they choose him over Jesus Christ. Right. Verse 15, Therefore if it is no great thing if his ministers are tr also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. I've heard great teachers preach this, and I stand for this, that the greatest Satanist you're going to find is going to be in a battle building in a nice suit and tie, an organized religion claiming a, a, a form of Christianity. They might not believe in this, but I believe there are Satanists still trying to infiltrate us, brothers and sisters of Christ, trying to claim they're Bible believers. Their end is going to be according to their works. They're correcting this book. They're tearing this book down. They're ignoring this book. They're trying to replace this with uh, philosophy, uh, spoiled by philosophy and feigned deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Okay? They're trying to replace this slowly. Why professing, I'm a King James Bible believer? You have Satanists among us, but mainly in these battle buildings, all these false religions, or uh, using Bible perversions, um, the, the different denominations, they're just, they're Satanists to swarm there. People think Satanists are going to be, you know, like Anton LaVey, sitting there doing an animal sacrifice, you know, all goth, black, and tattooed up, and, and metal all over the face and, and body. It's like, no, a true Satanist is going to try to look and pretend to be like one of us. Okay. That's what a true Satanist is going to be like. But Satan, he likes to counterfeit. And that's why it's so important to say, when, when I say angels don't have wings, it's because the Bible doesn't say angels have wings. And it teaches that angels, we have other studies where we've talked about this. I didn't go this too much, but Judges 13, if you want to read that chapter, pause the video and read the chapter. You have uh, Samson, his parents, they see a man out there. She goes, an, an angel of the Lord came and talked to me. 
First she came and said, the Bible says it's an angel of the Lord. Then she goes, she runs to her husband and says, a man spoke to me. Then the husband says, show me this man. Then the husband calls him a man. And the Bible says it's the angel of the Lord. But then eventually the Bible in that chapter says, and that man said this, the Bible called him a man. It's an angel, but they look like man. So it calls him an angel and then says, calls him a man. Angels are men. They look like men. They don't, they're not women. There are no women angels. There's no baby angels. Cherubs don't look like little babies with wings. That's garbage. You need to stick with the Bible. I, I really suggest a 33rd book, his study on cherubim, to really show you that that's what cherubim and seraphim look like. They look like nothing that the Catholic Church and its paganism tries to bring up and all these false religions and philosophies, philosophers of the age. The King James Bible is all you need. King James Bible is all you need. Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. Jesus is God the Father. They are one. And is referred to the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament. Satan wants to be like the Most High, Isaiah 14. So he counterfeits Jesus. But wait. I'm just going over my notes. But wait. Jesus, in my response, but Jesus does not have wings and angels do not have wings, but Satan does. Now for this study, I've added a little bit more to, than the response that I gave him. Because God opened my eyes and showed me a few things, and I want to be more thorough in my studies with videos. But wait, Jesus does not have wings, and angels don't have wings, but Satan does. Now, are you getting the why this lie is being spread? So Satan composes Jesus Christ. Oh, no, angels have wings. No, they do not. Cherub have wings. Satan's not an angel. He's a cherub. He's not Jesus Christ. He's not a, even... He's going to be a very close counterfeit in the time of Jacob's trouble, but he's a counterfeit. He's not, he's not the real Jesus Christ. Now, that's the first part of the question. If you draw angels with wings, which I believe, and show how it is false belief, how is, now we get into this How is my side supposed to be pleased with that? How is my side supposed to be pleased with that? I'm not here to please men. Okay? I'm here to be a servant to my brothers and sisters in Christ, and to preach truth, whether you're lost or saved, to preach absolute truth. I'm here to please God. Uh, I don't have this in my notes, but the Bible says, For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure we are and were created. And what pleases God the most? This is in um, the Ecclesiastes. For this is the whole duty of man, to fear God and to keep his commandments. And what's his commandments today? We're to preach the truth. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Well, just, that doesn't please us, doesn't matter. Out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. We're to preach the word, we're to preach truth. We're supposed to be a God pleaser, not a people pleaser. Now, Galatians, we read that one. I'll read it again Galatians 1.10. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of of Christ. Brother says Christ, I'm just going to preach the truth and when I'm wrong, I'm going to acknowledge I'm wrong. Okay? When you're wrong, I'm going to stand for the truth and wait for you to acknowledge when you're wrong. But when we're wrong and we're not lying, what I mean by wrong is not my feelings and opinions. When I'm not lining up with this book, I need to repent and get back to lining up with this book. When you're not lining up with this book, you need to repent and get back to lining up with this book. It's not about pleasing men. You don't you don't tell me what I want to hear. Oh, I'm of him. He said this. It's got to be right. This is the foundation. And I know there's a lot of people out there that are fakes that will say that. This is the foundation. I understand that. But how do you know if they're following this? If you've got your Bibles open and you're following along. If you're staying in the Word of God every morning, starting your day with the Word of God in prayer, and ending your day with the Word of God in prayer. If you stay in Bible studies once or twice a week. Because I know some of you brothers of Christ are very busy. Amen. If you stay in this book, hiding it in your heart, you can tell the fakes, the ones that say, this is the foundation, when they're trying to, when they really say, this is the foundation, you can tell the fakes. Whereas, are they really following this? Are they lying to you to deceive you? But we're not to be, the, we're supposed to please God, not men. To be a good servant of Jesus Christ, it's all about obeying God and preaching truth, not being a people pleaser. Ephesians 6.6, 6, we read, if you want to turn to Ephesians 6.6, 6, Not with eye service as men pleasers, 
but as the servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart, but to preach the truth. The will of God from the heart. The will of God is that we preach the word. We sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, the will of God from the heart. And a lot of our series of studies we've been talking about is this is where the word of God needs to be here, not here, here. It might start out here because you're reading and you're trying to memorize, which is good, but eventually the word of God gets down here. And what's the evidence of it gets down here? Your life shows it. You're living the Word of God. You no longer just, you know, know the Word of God. And you can talk the talk. You start walking the walk. 2 Timothy 4.1 2 Timothy 4.1 I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Here it is, verse 2. Preach the Word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. Why is that important? Like I said, Satan's trying to pose as Jesus Christ. All these false people think it's just a small thing. Angels with wings, it's just a small thing. But we're going to show why it, it can be a bad thing. It can be like a disease that starts infesting the body of Christ. Because it won't stop there. Next thing you know, they're going to promote this heresy. Then they're going to promote this lie. Then they're going to promote that lie. But we're just going to compromise with the world and compromise and compromise. And then we're given... You know, like I said, you give the flesh an inch, you give the world an inch, you give Satan an inch. I always said that. You give the flesh an inch, it'll take a mile. You give the world an inch, it'll take a thousand miles. You give Satan an inch, he'll take everything he can possibly take. You don't give an inch is the whole point. You don't give an inch. Why? Verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And we're going to get into this. Why is this important? Teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth. Angels look like men. There aren't women angels. They're not children angels, baby angels. They look like men. No wings. From the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. What this person was taught. Well, angels can have wings. That was, that's a fable. That's not truth. Prove me wrong, chapter and verse. Prove me wrong. Angels with wings is a fable, and people will seek out preachers that preach, teach, show, in any way, shape, or form that angels have wings. You say, really? Here's an example. This was one of his responses. Okay. Now, why did I quote 2 Timothy 4.1? Let's read his response. My point is that when I believe that angels had wings, even though, here's the, here's the key part here, even though Ruckman drew them with wings, it didn't please me because it showed because he showed how that it was an error. So by comparison, I don't see how you can believe that he was pleasing both sides. Stop. Did you just hear what he said there? I say he, it's he or she. You see what the person said here. I hope it's a brother in Christ, a sister in Christ. He first started out with. How is it supposed to please, how is my side supposed to be pleased with that? What's his side? The side that wants to believe angels have wings. Yeah, he comes down here and says, because I, evidently I mentioned Peter Ruckman, one of the areas that I really disagree with Peter Ruckman is where he would say one thing and do another. He said angels didn't have wings, but he drew them with wings. He was playing both sides. This is evidence of that. This person here was not offended when Peter Ruckman said angels didn't have wings. Why? Because he's playing both sides. Well, if I don't draw them with wings, then nobody will. He has all excuses, but that's all they are. It's just excuses for playing both sides. Why wasn't this person offended when Peter Ruckman said angels don't have wings? Why was this person offended when I said angels had no wings? Because I stood for the word of God, and I stood my ground, I wouldn't compromise. I don't draw them with wings, I don't show them with wings, angels don't have wings. I stand firm to the word of God. Why did Peter Ruckman not offend this person? Because he said angels don't have wings, but he didn't stand firmly for the word of God, he drew them with wings. He compromised. He played both sides. 
Why wasn't this person as offended with Peter Ruckman when Peter Ruckman said angels don't have wings? Brothers and sisters in Christ? Playing both sides. He just proved it right here. That's why it's so dangerous. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we can't play both sides. We can't say one thing. Well, the Bible does say this. However... We do this over here because of the world, the flesh, the world, because Satan wants us to do it this way. They won't ever say Satan, but honestly, it goes back to Satan. You're, doing it, you're either doing things God's way or Satan's way. Satan likes to say, yea, hath God said. Okay, he likes to take the word of God and then add to it. He likes to take the word of God and then make exceptions where we don't have to follow the scriptures. That's Satan. That's not a Bible believer and that's not Jesus Christ. Jesus said, this is 100% truth, we're to stand by it, no matter what. No matter what. Mm -hmm. So, I, let, let me get this straight. When I said angels do not have wings, you got offended. When Peter Ruckman said angels did not have wings, you were not offended. Do you see the problem, brother, says Christ? Peter Ruckman, in some areas, not all, but in some areas of his life, he was playing both sides. He could have drawn them in white garments and made it shining. If you wanted to do it with white garments that were shining or something, even though the Bible doesn't say that either. He could have just drawn them like men and white garments and then put an A on their chest. A represents angels. There are so many things he could have done and stood for the absolute truth, but he didn't. He caved in and he drew them with wings because that's what people want to see. That's what people expect to see. And he gave the people what they wanted and didn't get please God and do what was right by his word. And it didn't stop there in his life. It doesn't stop there in any brother of Christ's life that's in ministry. Once you give an inch, Peter Reckman started making mistakes elsewhere too, which we won't talk about here. But he started giving in, being a people pleaser. People call him a junkyard dog because he really goes after those Bible perversionists. But there's still a lot of areas of his life that he was a people pleaser. He pleased the world over pleasing God. This is one big example. Why is that? Because he drew them with wings. He compromised. He still gave them what they wanted. Your actions, I've said this time and time again, brothers and Christ, your words that you speak and your deeds, the work that you do, like someone running, <laughs> the work that you do, need to line up. And when they don't line up, you can be considered a hypocrite. There's another verse we're going to get to. Double-minded man. Mm -hmm. You can be considered a hypocrite. You can be considered a double-minded man. This is the perfect example of pleasing both sides. This person here was not offended when Peter Ruckman said it, but he was offended when I said it. Why? Because I don't please both sides. I stand for the truth, and I focus on pleasing God. And when I fail God, I fall on my knees. Forgive me, O Lord. Help me to line up with your perfect written word. Pleasing God, not pleasing men. If I should please men, I shouldn't be the servant of Christ. I offended because I stood for the truth and did not waver. And people will seek, seek out teach, teachers having itching ears... And even though he said angels don't have wings, he drew them with wings all the time. That pleases him. He seeks out teachers having itching ears that please him. And I've said this before, your actions speak louder than words. Your actions, brothers and Christ, speak louder than words. People are going to follow your actions more than they're going to follow your words. Okay. It's like someone who says, I'm a King James Bible believer... And yet, they're using Bible perversions. Do you think someone's going to actually believe you're a Bible believer if you're using Bible perversions all the time? No. Oh, I'm a Bible believer, yet your actions, you're always correcting the Bible. Replacing words in the Bible with your own words. Someone going to believe you're an actual Bible believer? No. But you said it. Your deeds are what people are supposed to watch. And today, they're trying to tell people you're not supposed to judge based off your deeds. Yes, we are. Your words and your deeds need to line up. Mm -hmm. Do as I say, not as I do. You get a lot of preachers that are like that, especially in the Babel building system. 
a lot of these fakes and frauds, what I would call servants of Satan, what I grew up in, do as I say, not as I do. When they're behind the pulpit, they're preaching nice, good things. But outside the pulpit, they're going against half of what they're preaching. And they've got an excuse for everything. An excuse for everything. Well, you know, angels, and I'm not trying to tear a brother in Christ down, but his, it was just an excuse. Well, people wouldn't know what they are if we don't draw them with wings. That's an excuse. They're just full of excuses. You need to stand for the Word of God, period, no matter what the consequence. No matter what the blowback is, we need to stand for the Word of God. All right? If I say angels do not have wings, I gave an example. It says, I tell you not to steal, but you steal, but I gave you some other better examples. You know, If I say angels do not have wings in the Bible, then I do not draw them with wings. You don't draw them with wings if you truly believe they don't have wings. Now, Peter Ruckman, I still believe that he, he loved the Word of God and he believed they didn't have wings. But he, that man was spoiled by philosophy and feigned deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and in a lot of areas, he wasn't backing the Scriptures fully. He backed it a little bit, but he wouldn't back it 100% with his actions and his words. And some of the things he backed, he even admitted... They're not in the scripture. It's based off traditions of men. And he holds the traditions of men above the scriptures sometimes. Still a great preacher, great teacher. So don't think that I'm just, like I said, I'm not telling anybody to stay away from Peter Ruckman. In this situation, when it came to the angels, because I want to focus on just one situation, he was playing both sides. And I made a comment like that. And this person said, even though blah, 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 it just proves my point. This person and their comments proved my point. The Bible's true. When you start playing both sides, you're trying to please men, because Peter Ruckman was, and you're trying to please God, and you can't do both. You start becoming a double-minded man. Saying angels don't have wings and then drawing them with wings is hypocrisy. It's playing both sides. And I, I said, you know this, our flesh loves to talk us out of conviction when it comes to playing both sides. Uh, I, I, here's an excuse. Oh, uh, this is okay. James 1.8 says, A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. When you start to become double-minded, you're going to start becoming unstable. What does that mean? This is no longer the final authority. You always say, this is my final authority, absolute truth, this is what I'm going to hide in my heart, this is my foundation. When you start trying to please the flesh, when you start trying to please the world, and when you start trying to please unwillingly, but unknowingly, because some of them are ignorant, you end up pleasing Satan. You can't serve two masters. I know that verse that's talking about money, but in, for instruction righteous, it's talking about anything. You cannot serve two masters. You'll love one and hate the other, or you'll cling to the one and despise the other. You can't serve God and mammon. But the instruction righteous, you can't serve two masters. You're either serving Jesus Christ, or you're serving your flesh, the world, and, and Satan. You can't do both. And the moment you start serving, trying to please any of the other three, other than Jesus Christ, you start becoming unstable. This, start, this foundation becomes rocky, because not because this is rocky, your reliance on this foundation becomes rocky. Your trust on this foundation becomes rocky. You start to depart from this, to do things the world's way. You start becoming unstable in that way. Mm -hmm. Now, let's get back to the important part. This is all important, but it's not just enough that a double-minded man's unstable. I can't leave it like that. Why? Because Peter Ruckman did live by example, and he did do some really great things, but he also set some bad examples. Brothers of Christ, I've set some bad examples. You've probably set some bad examples from being a babe in Christ, working your way up to being a mature Christian, uh, you know, a man of God, a, a woman of God, a brother or sister in Christ that's, that's been in the faith for a while. You've gone through a lot of things. You've, you've given up a lot of things. You've had to teach yourself to do a lot of things that God called, like starting your day with the Word of God in prayer and ending your day with the Word of God in prayer. The Bible says we are to live, be a living example. Once again, it's not just about words. It's about your deeds. 1 Corinthians 11, 1 says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. This is Paul. Be ye followers of me, as I also am of Christ. Paul was following Christ, and he was setting the example. Remember, Paul's the apostle to the Gentiles. He was setting the example. Our, our gospel was revealed to Paul 
Jesus revealed it to Paul to preach to us. How we're supposed to live today in the time of the Gentiles, Jesus showed Paul. Paul's living for Jesus, and he's teaching us that we to follow him because he's following Christ. Philippians 3.17 Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk as you have us for an example. Elder men in the faith. That's the us part. Elder men in the faith are supposed to be teaching the younger men. Elder women in the faith are teaching the younger women good things. It has a list of those good things. But the elders in the church are to be teaching the younger in the church how to act. Okay, That's what preachers are supposed to do. They're supposed to be setting the example as well as, as speaking the example. Or, sorry, I don't know if you can speak, but speaking the right things and being the right example physically. Be followed together of me and mark them which you walk as which walk so you have us for an example. Are they acting right? Are they doing right according to this word? That brother in Christ that's been, that's been saved for 20 years, he's been in ministry for 10 years, he's got experience, do they line up with, they, they look like him more, or they look like the world more? We're supposed to be setting the example, brother says Christ. Not just words, but deeds. And our deeds need to line up with the words, with our words, and our words need to line up with the scripture. And remember, what do people tend to follow? People are very visual. They're about images. They're going to follow your actions, not your words. Okay. I always give this an example of hypocrisy. I, could, let's, I, I don't have a problem with drinking anymore. I did get drunk a few times in my past as a lost person in the military. But I don't really struggle that much with drinking. So I'm going to use that as an as example these days. If I tell you drunkenness is wrong, and show you the scripture that drunkenness is wrong, and then I go out and I get drunk every week, that turns people away from this. Am I still preaching truth when I say drunkenness is a sin? Absolutely. But is people going to take me seriously when I say it? No. Am I turning people away from the truth when I do it? Yes. That's hypocrisy. That's what hypocrisy does. And this person, oh, I love Peter Ruffman. Why? He drew wings. He did not stand his ground and stand for the Word of God when it came to wings. Uh, angels don't have wings. He compromised. Okay? And the visual is what people went after. That's why that person wasn't offended by Peter Ruffman. The visual... The deeds, the actions. Colossians 3.17 says, And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Word or deed, everything needs to line up with this book. I've had some people say, Well, I'm doing this for Jesus Christ. We talked about this in the past. I'm doing this for Jesus. Chapter and verse. Well, who are you to judge me? You can always tell somebody who actually loves the Word of God and someone who loves themselves. Okay? Because they start fighting you when you say chapter and verse. I can always tell brethren that actually love the Word of God, you know, and hiding God's Word in your heart from people that, I don't know, maybe newly saved, and they're trying to fight the old man that was a false convert, because like I was, false convert, I was lied to a lot. God really had to show me the truth and get a lot of the junk out, the falsehood, the lies. And sometimes you struggle with God and fight God as a babe in Christ. But someone who's, I've been saved for 20, 30 years, and they have a problem with set, with chapter and verse, I question their salvation. Okay. Our words and our deed need to line up with this book, the King James Bible. 1 John 3.18 says, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Notice it has in deed, and it says and truth, but it puts those two together. Why? Because your deeds dictate what you truly believe here. I've said it time and time again, I use this as an example. If I look at somebody and say, I love you, and then I smack them as hard as I can across the face, and I look at them and go, but I love you, and I smack them as hard as I can, by the third or fifth time, that person's going to wake up and go, wait a minute, this person doesn't love me. But I said I loved him. But your actions said you don't love him. Your deeds is and in truth. Your deeds will dictate what you truly believe, how you truly feel about something or someone, how you treat them. 
You can preach truth to them and it offends them. But how do you treat them? People like to throw that around, that word love. I love, love, love. But your actions don't dictate it. And that's why we're doing a series of studies right now about the greatest commandment. Love the Lord thy God. And we're going through all the heart. We did the heart. Uh, we did the soul. We're going to get into the mind. We're going to get into um, the rest of it. But loving God is keeping His Word. Taking it, hiding your heart, and living it. That's true love for God. Love. I had someone get on to me, love is not an action. And I just preached the gospel to that person because they just started going way too crazy. They weren't using scripture to back up what they were saying. It was all feelings and opinions. They're probably part of this easy believism movement. Oh, love is, love is a feeling. I don't know what you're talking about. It's a feeling. And I showed them scripture where every time it mentions loving Jesus, if a man love me, he'll keep my words. If you love me, uh, no, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and will come unto him and make our abode with him. There is no greater love than this, than a man lay down his life for his friend. Jesus laid down his life for us at the cross. And he turns around and says, and ye, but ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. In other words, did you give your life to Jesus Christ on the cross? What's the evidence? You do whatsoever He commands you. You have the attitude of, God, you're in charge. You tell me. You command. I follow. Be careful about people like that. Be careful not to be deceived by people that are all talk and no walk. Luke 8.21 says, And he answered, said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. Now, doctrinally, this is the kingdom of heaven. It's Old Testament. But instruction in righteousness, we've read it in, in the New Testament. Something that overlaps. Okay. God's people in the Old Testament, all the way up to the New Testament. When you belong to God, you don't just hear the word that he, pre that he, he tells us. You do them. Someone who had a problem with that was King Saul in the Old Testament. He heard the commandments of God and decided to tweak them a little bit to please the people. He decided to change it a little bit or mess it up or go just completely. It's always going against it completely. When you change even a little bit, you're now going against the Word of God. Okay? To please somebody. Either yourself, the world, King Saul is trying to please the people. Okay? But in the Old Testament to the New Testament, the people that belong to God, they heard His Word, and they're supposed to do it. Today, do you belong to Jesus Christ? You keep His Word, and you do it. His Word says angels don't have wings. You don't draw angels with wings. You don't have figurines with angels with wings. You don't have statues with angels with wings. You don't have pictures with angels with wings. In your house, you stand for truth. Okay. James 1.23, James 1.23, For any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. And you can keep reading that if you want to keep reading. The natural man, the old man. The old man is supposed to be dead and buried with Jesus Christ. Did you give your life to Jesus Christ at the cross? What's the evidence? You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. There's no greater love than this. A man laid down his life for his friend. Oh, I'm a friend of Jesus. Did you give your life to Jesus Christ at the cross? Then your whole heart and attitude is, I need to do things God's way. And when you fail, you have that burden and that, you know, that heavy weight, that conviction to hurry up and get repented and get back to following Jesus Christ. Okay. If I believed and said angels do not have wings, we're going back to the subject of the question. If I said angels do not have wings, then I do not draw them with wings. It goes with anything in the Bible. If I say the Bible says this, I need to live it. If the Bible says that, I need to stand for that in every way. Okay. We are to stand for the truth not just in words, but in our actions as well. And we are not to promote the age-old lie that angels have wings so Satan can counterfeit the angel of the Lord. That's the biggest reason, I believe, like I said, the biggest push for angels having wings is so Satan composes the angel of the Lord, an angel of light. Because Jesus is the angel of the Lord. Okay? Jesus doesn't have wings. Angels don't have wings. 
Satan does have wings. So if he can lie and deceive enough people, he can blend in and start pretending to be Jesus Christ. Now don't get me wrong, that man of sin, the son of perdition that comes, he, he's a man. Satan, the fallen cherub, uh, he goes into this man, possesses him, and starts pretending to be Jesus Christ. Now, I don't want to get too in-depth with it because you read about uh, Judas Iscariot, where Satan entered into him. Okay? I'm, I don't, I, I can't, I'm not going to confess, or I, I'll confess this. I don't know everything there is to know about cherub and seraphim. Everything that they're capable of. Evidently they can possess a man if they want to. Because Satan is a cherub. He's a fallen cherub. And he possesses a man. Judas Iscariot. He's going to possess another man. The man of sin. The son of perdition. Right? And he's going to try to pose as Jesus Christ. And he's going to deceive many. Many. But the point part is. is we stand for truth brothers and sisters of Christ. I pray this helps. Remember the scriptures are our final authority, not feelings and opinions. The scriptures are our final authority. So I'm going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. And remember, the scriptures are our final authority, not our feelings and opinions. I'm out to please God, and you need to be out to please God, not men. I'll see you guys in the next video.